Hello, my name is Gabriel Garrido. This is a tutorial of my Spanish lab. Uh, in this tutorial, you will learn the basic uh, elements that you need to start working on your my Spanish lab account. The first thing will be to teach you how to open a Pearson account. In order to peer, uh, open a Pearson account, you will need an access code. The access code should have come with your book if you bought it at an Ole Miss bookshop. If you have the access code with you, just go to any search engine and type my Spanish lab. Go to this link, click on it, and go to, if you see this window, to register student. Then click on register now. They will ask you, do you have an access code? Yes, I have. Click on next. They will ask you, if you have a Pearson Education account, no, you'll need to create a login name. I advise you to use uh, a login name you're familiar with, like for example, your email uh, address could be. Create a password, retype your password, and then here on the lower part of the window, you'll type your access code. Remember, the access code is case sensitive. You have to write exactly the same access code that you have uh, or that it came with your book. Click Next, and if you did it right, you have a Pearson account. I close this window. Now, if you have a book but you don't have the access code, you need to buy an access code. In order to do that, go to a search uh, engine like Google, type All Miss Pearson, and then Custom. As you can see, on the screen. Type enter and it will take you to this link. I click on this link and I can see on my window the different courses that we offer. For example, if you're a student of SPAN 121, click on purchase or purchase uh, access here. I click on it and they tell me that the access code costs $116. They ask me, do you have a Pearson Education account? No, this is not the case. And again, you'll have to create a login name, create a password, retype your password. Click on Next. They will ask you for your account information, payment information, and I believe you can take it from there. I'm going to close this windows, and I will let you know how to log in. Now, by this moment, you should have a Pearson account. So, go to Google or Yahoo, type my Spanish lab, click on this link, and click on sign in. Type your username, the password that you have previously selected, and click on sign in. I'm an instructor, so I have taught different courses. You, if you are a new student, you shouldn't have any course displayed. So you have to click Enroll in a course. Here they will ask you for the course ID. Your instructor should have previously sent you a course ID. You will recognize the course ID because it begins with CR as some number. Uh, please do not use a course ID of a friend of yours that is registered in another section. After you have typed the course ID, press Submit. You should be able to see your instructor's name link, like Gabriel Garrido, to the course. I'm going to click on one of my courses. I'm going to go to student view. I have the instructor view right now. You should have on your window something similar to what you see right now. First of all, we're going to have to arrange the setting of my Spanish lab. Click on tune up your browser. It will take you to a window similar to the one you see right now. I'm using Firefox 
everything is on green means that all the programs that I need in order to work with my Spanish lab have already been downloaded and installed in my computer. If you need one of them, you will see a red cross and the system will take you to a window or a website in which you are able to download and install those programs. I'm going to close this window. Now you need to set up your time zone. Click on my profile here. I need to go uh, back to uh, Instructure View. If you click on my profile, top right, you will see the different time zones. Please select Central Time US and Canada and then press Save. Now I have to ask you to disable pop-up blockers. Mac and PCs, as we all know, are different. I'm using Firefox and I will disable the pop-up blockers for Firefox. I will go to Tools on the top of my menu. Options. Contact. I have already disabled it. Here I have enabled a pop, uh, block, uh, pop up windows. So I click on it and press OK. When I disable the pop up blockers, it enables me to work on my Spanish lab activities. Now I have finished with the settings. Now let's see how we can find the activities that we need to do. On the right side of your screen, you will see a calendar. Under that calendar, you will see announcement. Your instructor will post the announcements here. For example, here you can see or find information about the tutoring hours and office hours. On calendar, you will see the different activities that I do. In this case, on February 20, 215, 2015, I beg your pardon, March 2015, April 2015, and so on. As you can see, in the case of SPAN 121, there are a lot of activities due on February 2015. Make sure you log in quite often in my Spanish lab because it's easy to forget these activities. I'm gonna click on one of those activities, like one that is due on February 9th. I click on it. I can see that it's a SAM activity, Chapter 1, and there are different amount of questions that I have to answer. I have not studied any of them. If I click on one of them, for example, vocabulario, saludos y despedidas. I will see the activity. Let me display it on the screen. It's a multiple choice kind of activity. Buenos días, profesora. There are different options. Me llamo Maria Luisa. Different options. I'm going to select. I'm just randomly selecting some. And then I will click finish submit for granting. If I don't complete all of them, like for example, in this case I have not completed all of them and I press save for later, the system enables me to save part of the activity for later. But unless I have clicked on, let me show you, the link that says finish and submit for grading or finish submit for grading, the system will not be enable me to get any points for that activity. Don't forget about pressing finish submit for grading. I'll leave this page. I go back to today's view to see other activities. I click on the activity on February 10th. The system is refreshing. It's, I see that it's composition number one. I click on it. 
In composition number one, I will see a description of what they want me to write about. Mi vida, introduce yourself to your Spanish instructor, greet him, her, mention your name, etc. It will tell me how many words do I have to write, a minimum of 70 words. I have previously wrote one sentence just to uh, show you how you can use the link save for later. I previously click on save for later and I have saved El Niño es Guapo. Now Spanish, if you can see uh, on the top right of your screen, have different characters that most likely will not appear on your keyboard. For example, I would like to say uh, mañana or write mañana. I say ma, but English, this N is not the Ñ of Spanish. So I go, what do I do? I go top right, click on the Ñ, mañana. Mañana, tomorrow or this morning. Mañana por la mañana. Now, if I click on save for later and I close this activity, composition one, and then open it again, I will be able to see that mañana, el niño es guapo, mañana. If I'm a student and I need to write 70 words, after I write my 70 words, I need to click on finish submit for grading. If I don't do this, the instructor will not be able to grade my composition. I will get a zero. Now, when do when is this activity due? You will have it here, just like any other activities. This is due on February the 10th. At what time? 11.59 p.m. It is imperative that you have submitted those activities, composition, e-text activities, at the time that the activities, composition, e-text are due. Once we have arrived on February 10th, 11.59 p.m., although you're going to be able to see the composition and the see the activity or the uh, e-text activity, the system will not longer grade it. You will get a zero. Our department does not allow late submissions. There's no exceptions please make sure that you check on your calendar and that each activity is submitted on time. Now, how do we know that we have finished all the activities due on one day? Let's say there's one on Friday 6th of February. I go to course materials. Click on it, Chapter 1. It's an e-text activity. I have previously opened it. I previously made a submission of that first part of that activity. It's called the 10101. I see that I have not passed. I scored a temporarily 37.50 and I still have some activities to go. I have to finish each one of those activities. So far they gave me a, a temporary 37.50%. If I go to grades, I will see the 37.50% on the e-tax activity. Here it is, 37.50%. That doesn't mean that if I don't submit the other activities linked to the e-tax chapter one, I will, in the end, get a 37.50%. This system will count all the activities, the ones that I finished and the ones that I didn't complete, and will give me the grading according to the work that I did. Probably, in this case, if I don't do the rest of the activities, I will get roughly a 3%, 2% or 4%. So far, I have a deceiving 37.50%. So make sure to go to course materials, chapter one, in this case because it's an e-text activity, e-text activity, and see that you have finished all of them. 
I go back to today's view. Before I finish this short tutorial, I would like to ask you to explore on your own about the different features of my Spanish lab. Uh, we have not much time like uh, to explain you all the features so like the glossary verb chart tutorials you may find interesting all those features I will before we finish I will just like to show you the e-text I'm gonna open on the e-text now when I open the e-text the system gives me a digital version of the Arriva 6 edition book if you have the Arriva by you at this moment and you go to page 15 for example you will see the same page display digitally in front of your screen that enables you to read the Arriva book anywhere in the world in China, South America, New York or California it doesn't matter as long as you have internet if you feel like printing it because you want to write down and do your homework or some particular activity just go on the top right and press print I'm gonna close this and before I close this tutorial I have to thank you for the attention uh, and I wish you a great semester have a lovely semester bye bye